Hi and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're looking at the path tools and there are three path tools. The pencil, the pen and the quill or the calligraphy tool. Um, and they are in order. So you have the pencil, the pen and the calligraphy tool on the left toolbox. And they're about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine tools up. And the one that we're looking at is ten tools from the bottom and it is the pencil tool and that's the first one we can activate that by holding F6 or we can press P for pencil on our keyboard so let's get into it let's select the tool and let's look at how we this tool works so we have our attributes at the top and we're going to do that in a second but first let's look at how we actually draw with this pencil tool we see that we have the cross uh, the, the, the trademark cross and the pencil indicating the pencil tool as our cursor and the first way that we can draw is that we can click left click and, dra and drag our area and then left click, again, left click again to oops sorry let's do that again and left click again to end the path and then you see that we have one node and one node here and it's a regular stroke so the next way we can do this is that we can extend this by instead of clicking once we're going to double click so we're going to left click here and double click and then we get another extendable path we can double click again and get another extendable path double click again double click again double click and it curves each path as it's moving it and we just click once to stop it and therefore we have our path here so we've created a bit more of a complex path right here with our double clicks and then for the next one now this is the where the greatest power of the draw tool is is that we don't have to double click any at all we can draw with this pen this tool as if it was a pencil on paper by just simply left clicking and holding the left click as we draw so in this one we just left left clicked once dragged out left click again in this one we left clicked and double clicked to create each corner and in this last one we're just going to hold the left click and draw out so let's hold the left click and draw out and we are drawing out and if you hold this left click you can pretty much draw to your heart's content and this is where the power of the draw tool is for the majority is the fact that you can draw these things as if you were drawing on a canvas or drawing on a piece of paper good so these are the three ways that we can draw with the pencil tool now we're going to look at uh, the, each one of these paths and what it means and each one of them are paths they are simply there's no tapering here so they're strokes and we can adjust the size of them if you go in the fill and stroke dialog box so that's object fill and stroke stroke style and we can increase the size of this so you can see that this is an in these are indeed strokes but the pencil tool is powerful we can do a lot more and we can have other options other than strokes when creating these paths so let's delete these and let's look at the actual attributes of each one of the pencil tool so the first one you see is that we create regular bezier path and regular bezier paths only have rounding of edges according to the smoothing value that you have here so if this was smooth to zero then all those round edges that we saw as we were double clicking we wouldn't see them so if we remove the smoothness altogether and we just double click around we notice that there's no smoothing of the corners here every corner is just a corner barely any smoothing any at all and if you just click once stop it and you just get a basic path to path right here nothing special good now just delete that so this is the most free use 
mode of the pencil tool, the regular Bezier path. Now I'm going to move on to the spiral path. And spiral is where Inkscape imports its mathematical calculations to make the curves that you the curves of the final path the most perfect and smooth curves as possible. So if I am creating something like this, which has curves but it's jaggedy and all over the place, Spiral is going to correct this line, this green line right here, and it's going to add its mathematical calculations to make every curve as perfect as possible. So what was our drawing now has turned into this very smooth, curvy path. And if we activate the node tool here, because when using the paths tool, you're going to be using the node tool quite a bit. So you can press F2 for that. And I'll leave a link to the description to the node tool if you want to refresh it on that. And what we're going to do here is that we're just going to hover over it. And the red line is there and we can see where our original drawing was and how Inkscape has made these mathematical calculations to create the best more smooth curve out of what we've drawn so if you're looking for a curvy result with perfect curves then the spiral is the best tool but it's it's not the freest because again Inkscape is injecting this mathematical code in there and so it may not give you the, the result you want if you want an exact result okay so the next one I'm going to be looking at with the pencil tool and the last one the last mode is the B-spline path and the B-spline path I think is what Illust Adobe Illustrator uses and other vector tools use it too and this is just another way of drawing curves via Bezier tools so what this does is that it draws a curve based off of um, an angle between two lines that are perpendicular to each other and you'll be adjusting those lines so if I draw these things right here and draw our next one right here so draw a free curve path we can see that as we draw it how the curve interacts with this so for the pencil tool the B spline path system becomes what we what I'd like to refer to as a line of best fit it calculates where each one of these nodes are and it attempts to draw a line through them as curved as with, with with curves and smoothing that works through the nodes to get a line of best fit similar to how you would have a graph of, of points and you draw the line of best fit through those graphs through that through those points the B spline works like this also and draws a line of best fit but it's just a different calculation method for getting a smooth curve through the nodes that you produce the only thing is that it's not as curvy as the spiral tool and it is not as free as the basic Bezier tool so it's a nice mix in between the two So there we have it and let's just have one with the regular bezier tool just for the sake of having it and the smoothing good so the b spine works like a best of a line of best fit the bezier tool is the most truest to the line that you drew from the original with the smoothing added and the spiral tool makes everything makes the per most perfect curves as possible using the no data that you have provided and these are the three so now that we've looked at the three modes we're going to be looking at the next the other attributes available and also this is something for you to look at too you notice that as we move it they change and you have to remember that these are paths they're calculated in real time. So you will see move if you move them and don't convert them to 
and, and remember that these have mathematical equations attached to them and they will be edited real time so if you move them and don't set the shape then you'll get a different shape as you move them along and that's something that you need to keep in mind this is still math and the math is still and the math function is still operated by um, the matrix data that's presented to it by location so as you move location then the curves may change because their location variables values are a factor in these mathematical equations that's being applied to each one so with that in mind let us move on to the other attributes for the pencil tool press p and we see smoothing now smoothing is another mathematical calculation that Inkscape applies to these things these um, pencil tools that smooth out the jaggedness of your drawing and we demonstrated in the beginning that if we bring the smoothness to one then we notice that there is barely any curves made at each one of the vertices and it looks much like how we drew it and that's precisely what it does I mean not all the time you want your drawing to have all the jaggedness that you have in your hand when you're drawing it if you're looking for that effect then by all means reduce the smoothness to zero to one but what this what the smoothness does is that when you want to may have something that looks hand-drawn but it's not quite as amateurish in terms of its shaping you don't want that to show too tough or too much in your drawing then you use the smoothing tool to smooth it out and make it look a bit nicer to the eye even though you still want that sort of hand drawn look and that's great for when you want to draw things like board um, board animations and um, like whiteboard animations and um, blackboard animations and you want it to look sort of neat but still hand drawn so if I draw a house right now let's um, demonstrate this is the pencil tool and let's draw a house put the smoothing to 50 by default I think it comes to 69 and we're just gonna draw this roof and then draw this here and draw these down and draw this across so right now if I increase the size of this just so that you can see it and if I wanted to I can just let me just add some terminals to this just for the sake of what we're seeing now this looks like a hand drawn drawing but it's not quite as too jagged for you to know that for it to be distracting it's just enough and you can go back and edit these as well it's just enough of a drawing hand drawing for you to see the elegance in the hand drawing but still and appreciate that but still be able to legibly see that this is indeed a drawing so this is where the smoothing is really hand really handy when you want to get that right balance between rough look and still being visually appealing then you edit the smoothing according to what you're looking for and for persons who are not so good with their hands it got not so straight with their hands this is a great tool also for you because it still allows you to get the nice sort of smooth effect and still be able to draw it by your hands even though you know your hands aren't that that um, straight in terms of what you're drawing okay so we have our little house here nice icons and stuff um, another example would be like if you're drawing you draw an arrow or so and you've got it here and you want your arrow to be sort of um oops wrong tool sorry let's delete that pencil and you've got your arrow here so this arrow looks a bit jagged so i could say all right i want this arrow to have a bit more smoothing to it so let's increase the smoothing to like 70 and you get an arrow a bit more smoothing and you can always go back in and adjust it the way you want to and then if you increase the size of this now by five you know it doesn't look quite as bad you get a sort of arrow right here okay so moving on from there that's the smoothing tool 
Uh, next we have LPE based interactive simplifier and LPE simplifier then simply simplify simply flatten. So one of these tools allows you to edit the Bezier paths after you create the path, and the next one locks the Bezier tool so you don't so you don't get the option to edit the path afterwards. Good. Next we have these tools here, and we have the triangle in, triangle out, ellipse from clipboard, bend from clipboard, and last applied. So last applied, let's work in from our, from the top up, is when you have the last applied of these as the element that they're going to use to curve. And for us, the last applied was just none. So it's applying the none to this. So right now, default is a stroke. Triangle in, if we get our triangle right now, I'm just going to create a quick triangle right here. Let's just create a quick triangle. Straighten these lines. Good. So we have our triangle here. So triangle in is basically, and triangle out is basically, the Bezier is calculation is going to take a triangle and just stretch out this triangle as far as possible while applying the curve to this stretched triangle. So the longer the curve is, the longer the stretch of the triangle. And that's triangle in. Triangle out, on the other hand, is just the opposite direction of triangle in. And it's going to move from a flat side to the pointed corner while applying the curve to these. So we're going to do that right now. Let's take a look at triangle in. And sometimes these things, let's make a look at looking at pencil. And triangle in. And sometimes these things can crash inscape for me, so just bear with me on that. And if we look at it closely, we can see it's just a triangle, just like this. That's just been elongated. And if we want to curve this triangle, we can. And if we activate this purple, this pink node, we can extend how big this triangle is. And we can see that this is also a triangle that goes in. And that's triangle in. Triangle out is that when you draw it, it does the opposite. So it starts from the base and heads out to the point. While this starts from the base on this side and heads out to the point. And the other one starts at the point and heads out to the base. So, yeah, triangle in and triangle out are just elongated triangles on the opposite sides. Looking at the pencil tool, the next one from triangle in and out is the ellipse. And the ellipse is an elongated circle. So the ellipse is a circle stretched out really, really thin. So the longer it is, the more stretched out the ellipse. So if we do that right now, let's look at the ellipse and stretch out good if we look at this and use a circle tool and pull it out we can see that this is just a circle stretched out really really long so the triangle in is a triangle stretched in triangle out is a triangle stretched out applied to the curve and the ellipse is a circle that's stretched out that you can curve along the way Good. Clipboard is when you don't use a triangle or a circle, but you apply a clipboard element of your own choosing. So if I wanted to apply, say, a star, I'm going to use this star right here. Let's reduce the amount of corners, make this easy for it to use. Good. All I'd have to do now is to copy this star, go to the pencil tool, activate from clip clipboard, and then stretch it across. Good. And you see this star has been stretched across this path. Now this takes a lot of calculation for Inkscape. So 
be wary as you use this if you have a fast computer it won't be too much of a problem but if your computer is slow your computer will definitely struggle with these type of calculations so you may want to keep that in mind okay and last we're going to look at bend from clipboard so we're going to copy there go to pencil tool and go to bend from clipboard and we're just going to see what this does Okay, it looks like bending from clipboard gives us far more flexibility with the way the star bends along the line. So those are the three options right there that you have in terms of how you can create a shape with the pencil tool. These options trans these options go across all Bezier tools, but we'll take a look at them again in the other Bezier tool in the other path tools. But this is the pencil tool complete. If you enjoy this tutorial, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, be sure to ask them in the comment section. You can also add, ask me on my website if you wish. But until I see you again, get up and design a new door. Later.